Dear sisters and brothers, welcome to the live cast of this Mass for Friday of week 26 in Ordinary Time, the 2nd of October 2020. Today we celebrate the memorial of the Holy Guardian Angels. Our entrance antiphon. Angels of the Lord, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your unfathomable providence are pleased to send your holy angels to guard us, hear our supplication as we cry to you that we may always be defended by their protection and rejoice eternally in their company. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord says this, I myself will send an angel before you to guard you as you go and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Give him reverence and listen to all that he says. Offer him no defiance. He would not pardon such a fault, for my name is in him. If you listen carefully to his voice and do all that I say, I shall be enemy to your enemies, foe to your foes. My angel will go before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. The Lord has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. The Lord has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, My refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. The Lord has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. It is he who will free you from the snare of the fowler, who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. The Lord has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the plague that prowls in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. The Lord has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. Upon you no evil shall fall, nor plague approach where you dwell. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. The Lord has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, all his hosts, his servants who do his will. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So he called a little child to him and set the child in front of them. Then he said, I tell you solemnly, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so the one who makes himself as little as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. See that you never despise any of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven are continually in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the memorial of the guardian angels. But how can we speak convincingly of the guardian angels when many of us have never seen the guardian angels in our lives? Perhaps we might have seen the visible ones in our friends, in our loved ones, in people who try to help us. But have we seen spiritual angels? I'm sure very few of us would have seen one. And so, can we truly believe that we have a guardian angel? And furthermore, it is good to take note that belief in a guardian angel is not an article of faith in the Catholic Church, which means to say that it is not a truth that is taught officially by the church. Although in tradition, we speak of the guardian angels, simply because in today's gospel, Jesus speaks about the fact that these little ones are uh, being guarded by the angels in heaven, protected by them. Nevertheless, even though the church has never defined guardian angels as a dogma of faith, angels certainly is a dogma of faith, belief in the angels. And this is very clearly stated in our creed when we say, I believe in one God, the maker of heaven and earth, visible and invisible. So the creatures that are invisible refers to the spirits, the angels. And of course, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it is also defined uh, more clearly, who are these angels? They are purely spiritual creatures. They have an intelligence, they have will, and they are personal beings and immortal. And their perfection surpasses any human creatures. So that is what we know about the angels. What is important when we celebrate the feast of the guardian angels, unlike we celebrate the feast of the archangels a few days ago, the feast of the guardian angels simply wants us to remember that each one of us is unique before God. That God attends to each one of us individually is such a beautiful thought to know that we are all precious to God. Every one of us, no one is unimportant to God. And that is why for each one of us, he gives us a guardian angel to watch over us, to look after us. And truly, guardian angels have been given to us to protect us. And we have seen how the angels were sent to protect Daniel when he was in the den of the lions. And how the angel also protected St. Peter and released him from prison. Even in the life of Jesus, we are told the angels ministered to him before, during the temptation and when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. But it is good for us to take note 
Angels really are intermediaries of God. They are messengers of God. In fact, the word angel means messenger. And significant to take note that before the prophets came to the scene in the Old Testament, God spoke to Abraham through the angels, through the messengers. And during the time of the prophets, the angels were less prominent. Of course, then we have Isaiah who saw the vision of the angels. So, when there were prophets, God used prophets. When there were prophets were lacking, God used angels. And in the New Testament, we find that before the incarnation of our Lord, angels were present as the angel who spoke to our Blessed Mother. And then after the death of Jesus, immediately the angels were seen in the life of the early church, guiding the church. But nowadays we hardly heard of stories where people have seen angels as I've said, other than the obvious visible ones that we know each day in our daily life. So it is important for us to realize this, that angels have been given to us by God so that we will not travel this journey alone. You know, it's a terrible thing eh, for Christian eh, Catholics to travel the journey of faith alone. Dangerous. Never be alone. That is why so many of our Catholics have been led astray by the evil one because evil one loves loneliness. loneliness. But for us, we are Catholics. We are Christians. We belong to the body of Christ. And so angels are our traveling companion. They are meant to guide us, to lead us. And therefore, it's important to be attentive to the angels that God sent into our lives, even the visible ones, our friends, our teachers, and even our conscience. These are the voice of God, the messengers of God, telling us how to walk the way of love, the way of truth. That's why today in the first reading from the book of Exodus, the Lord said, I place my angels before you to guard you as you go and bring you to the place that I have prepared you. Give him reverence and listen to all that he says. Offer him no defiance. He would not pardon for such a fault, for my name is in him. That is why we are called to listen carefully, be attentive to the voice of the angels speaking to us. If we defy the angel, the voice of God, we are going to suffer. And that's why many of the mistakes we made in life is simply because we don't listen to the angel prompting us what to do. This prompting very often takes in the form of conscience or through our loved ones. And sometimes we have this intuition that something should not be done. But we are rebellious. We defy the angel. And as a result, we get into trouble. We make a mess of our lives. And so it is very important, therefore, because the angels have been sent by God to protect us, to guide us, that we need to pray to the angels, but not worship. Huh? Angels are not to be worshipped. They are creatures. Uh, angels belong to the communion of saints, uh, to the same order. They are creatures, they are not gods, so we don't worship angels. But we pray to the angels, just as we pray to the saints, or better still, we ask the angels to pray for us. And we are told in the book of Revelation, that is what the angels did, praising God and interceding for us. In the letter of Hebrews, we are told that angels are ministering spirits. They are here to minister to us, they are here to guide us. And so one of the most beautiful prayer to the angels, which I learned when I was very young, I don't know whether you still use it, is the prayer to the angels. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commit me here. Ever this day be at my side to light and guide, to rule and guard. A very short prayer to the angels, asking the angels for divine protection. And this is what we have to do. 
pray to the angels, ask the angels for inspiration, for help. Again, some of us might have difficulties because, you know, we are living in a very technological world, a world of science. They think, you know, you all Catholic stupid people like us, you know, so silly as uh, praying to angels. Angels are for kids, eh? not for adults, intelligent people. But precisely today in today's gospel, Jesus said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, he called a little child. He said, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, don't be skeptical about angels. Just because you cannot see does not mean they don't exist. Can you see spirits? Very few people also can see spirits, but we know spirits are real. In fact, if you don't believe in, in angels, you are saying you don't believe in spirits because angels are pure spirits. If you don't believe in spirits, you don't even believe that you are a real human being made of body and spirit. That means you don't even believe in God because God is pure spirit. So faith in angels are very important because it is a, what we call a dogma of faith. And so we need to have this trusting faith like a little child dependent on God, like a little child asking the angels to guide us. And the angels will certainly, as Jesus said, you know, uh, he will protect us because the Lord has commanded his angels to keep us in all his ways. So this is something so beautiful for us. And that is why today on the Feast of the Garden Angels, uh, let us uh, pray to the angels, but not only pray, just like the saints, not only pray to the angels, we must imitate the angels. And that is why today you must be an angel to someone. Huh? Be an angel, be a good messenger, be like a messenger, be like uh, St. Gabriel, uh, good news. Huh? Or be like St. Raphael, huh? be an angel of healing. Or be like St. Michael, huh? be an angel that protect, especially our young ones. And be careful, huh? especially our young ones. We need to guide them, we need to guard them. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and book of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, you receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings we bring before you as we venerate your holy angels and graciously grant that under their constant protection we may be delivered from present dangers and brought happily to life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels, for the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight, redounds to your own surpassing glory 
and by their great dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, of these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant graciously 
Run her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer each other a warm sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. In the presence of the angels, I will praise you, my God. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I thank you for sending me my guardian angel. The angels were tended to you when you were your ministry and to your church. Lord Jesus, it is through your angels that I have come closer to you, protected from harm and from all evil. And so, Lord Jesus, as I desire to receive you spiritually into my heart, since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask that you pour forth your spirit of love into my heart. Fill me with your divine presence so that I too can be your glory, your presence to others, just like your angels mediate your presence to me. Lord Jesus, grant me this grace as I receive you into my heart to be conscious of your angels in my life and also to be an angel to my loved ones and to those whom I meet each day, helping them, guiding them, protecting them. Amen. Let us pray. As you are pleased to nourish for us for eternal life, we so great a sacrament, O Lord. Direct us by the ministry of angels into the way of salvation and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We thank you, dear sisters and brothers, for worshipping with us today, and we hope you can join us again tomorrow at noon. Have a blessed day.